just fine before I met you. I drink too much and that's an issue, but I'm okay. Hey, you tell your friends it was nice to meet them, but I hope I never see them again. Hey guys, it's Lily, and today I'm going to be doing a new video, and this is a part of a new bookish series on my channel. I feel like I'm pretty basic. I haven't done much creative videos from my own ideas, from my own brain, if you know what I mean. This new series is called Bookmark. This series is inspired by Christine's video on how to make a bookmark, and it's also matched with his other video inspiration from a vegan channel because I am vegan, and they're called Hot for Food, and they have this series called The Recipe. And basically, right then and there, without any looking up, preparing, whatever, they just open up the fridge, whatever in there, they make a dish, and they film it for you. And this is sort of what this is like, but except with bookmarks. So basically, the bookmark video plus recipe video equals bookmark. So what I will be doing in this series is basically, if I'm really feeling this fandom one day, or I have a really good bookmark idea, and I just need to put it on a bookmark, because I do need more bookmarks right now, I only have like one main bookmark. All my other ones, like fandom ones, I normally keep in the actual series, like I have one for Allegiant, and Ignite Me, and y'all. So. I need to I need to make more bookmarks and this is why I'm making the series and plus I love making bookmarks. Christina and I always make bookmarks together. And if you don't know who Christina is, she was in my that movie review for Allegiant, so you can go check that out to see who she is. She's just like one of my best book friends. Actually my only book friend. So yeah, without further ado, let's go make some bookmarks. <laughs> so I use Pick Monkey if I want to make a bookmark on my computer just because I'm a perfectionist. Obviously, using a computer is going to give you the most perfect and precise bookmark. I used to, when I started off, only doing handmade ones. So I made this with Christina, if you still remember her. So to start off, when you get on Pick Monkey, you're going to want to go to design. The dimensions for the bookmark that I use is a fourth of a piece of paper. So on the computer, that is going to be 275 by 800. So once you get here, you want to make sure you go on Google Images or whatever and just look up a bunch of pictures. And I've already been wanting to do this video for a long time, so I already have loads of stuff here. I guess I had the idea of doing something with a skyline of that place. I got some New York ones and London ones. And I also have the Angelic Power one here. Let's start with the New York one maybe. This is already looking pretty cool in my eyes. And we're gonna also, let's add one of the Angelic Power ones. My image was something like a paint splatter skyline dripping into an angelic power. I also want it to obviously say the immortal instruments because we are making this by the series. Hey guys, so unfortunately my camera died so I finished the first one but I am going to record myself doing the infernal devices inspired one. So I just want you guys to take a look at what I did. So I just have the mortal instruments with the main characters written here. I have the New York skyline. Instead of doing the whole thing, I really want a um, Statue of Liberty there just to like be like, yeah, that's New York. So I open it up a bit. Um, if you do overlay and you can do here, I actually want to do something. So if you go to overlay, you click it, and then you press eraser. There's different harshness. If you go more this way, it's less harsh. So you kind of get this kind of like faded look. I'm just gonna go to save. So you gotta see the final product here too. It's it's so I'm really proud of this right now. We're going to write the mortal instruments. Now that we have TMI stuff done. Let's move on to TID. We're back to this one because I want to use the same kind of format. Some easy things are delete the New York skyline. Change this to the infernal devices. And uh, all of this into. And we have to go to overlays and add in the London one. So here's the black and white London one. I just changed all the names to Infernal Devices characters.
I think I like that. Okay, so I just got these from my printer. And I'm just going to show you how I set it up on my computer. So, I did two a paper. And I just put one at the top. And one at the bottom, at the top, one at the bottom. And then I just print it, and this is what it looks like. So we have the In Front Devices one, and we have the Mortal Instruments one. And at first, I printed it like a different way, and I decided that I was going to flip it, so I flipped it. So now I have an extra one, because the other one didn't print because it counts it halfway through. But I have an extra one just in case I mess up, so that's good. <laughs> or I can make two because I love the more instruments. Okay, so now we're actually going to assemble the bookmark. And what you're going to need is double-sided tape. This is just scotch double-sided tape. And you can use regular tape. You can just do kind of like the rolling up like thing, if you know what I mean. Or you can use glue, stick, or liquid. But I just like double-sided tape because it minimizes the chance of bubbles in my bookmarks. And also you're gonna need cardstock. This is right now a piece of cardstock that I already ripped in half. You guys already know I use a fourth of the paper. So we're gonna be folding this in half in a second. You're also going to need your design, a pair of scissors, and lastly, you're gonna need the laminate for making bookmarks. So let's get into this. I already did two of them. So I already have this one and this one done. So the two moral instrument ones I already have done. So what I'm gonna do now for you guys is the infernal devices one. So let's get into this. So first we need our cardstock. And as I said before, this is already a half of the cardstock. I will show you how to efficiently rip this. So this is already half. So you're gonna wanna rip it in half and then you wanna rip the half in half. So we get a fourth. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So what you're gonna do is fold sure you line them up and everything. Unless if you're not a perfectionist like me. <laughs> okay, so once you get your rough fold, don't press down too hard, just fold it in half. Because if you do it too hard in the beginning, it's if you make a mistake, it's gonna be hard to fix. So I just roughly folded it in half. Now that you have the perfect fold, you wanna start using your nails and getting really into the paper. <sighs> So for the most efficient rip, you're gonna wanna first do it this way, and then turn it this way, and then you're gonna flip it this way and do this side, and then do this side. And you wanna keep going at each side for a pretty long time, and you'll know when it's about time to rip. When the paper starts getting a little grainy, I don't know if you can see that, but like when it starts to kind of shed at the crease, that's when the paper is starting to get weak. So that would be a good time to start ripping. And then rip once you're ready. And there you have it, the rip. I've been doing this for a long time, so my rips are always perfect, or at least like 99.99999% perfect. Um, so don't worry if it's a little bit off when you first do it if you've never done this before. It just takes practice, but it's pretty easy once you get it. So now with the rip, do you see the kind of like, like the kind of like the debris? I don't know what to call it. I call it peach fuzz. So like little fuzzies that the end of the paper has once you rip it, like the fibers of the paper. Um, you're gonna want to trim that so we get a hard edge. So what I like to do is like pull them outwards and once you do that you want to take your scissors and cut it so do you kind of see like this strand of paper fibers that's the stuff that I cut off and I don't know if you can tell but this one I cut and then this one I didn't cut but I just do that just because of me you don't have to do it but I like the straight edges now we're gonna wanna stick the design onto the cardstock. And to make it a little easier, if you printed it the same way that I did, I'm just gonna cut down the middle, just so we're working with 
less paper. And if you want, you can actually cut a little close to the design, but make sure to leave a good amount of space. The next step is to put the design onto the cardstock. And I find it easier to put double-sided tape on the cardstock and then lay it onto the design, but you can figure out the easier way for you. That's just the way that I have liked ever since I started making bookmarks. So what I'm gonna do is just put some tape at the top and then at the bottom and along the sides and then in the middle. You don't really need to secure it perfectly because we are gonna laminate it and that will keep them stuck together. This is just so that the paper doesn't shift while you're laminating. Okay, so now that I have taped it, I don't know if you can see that. This is the hard step. And when you're putting it on, don't press down hard until you're for sure that that's what you want. Another tip is definitely to use like sunlight or the flashlight on your phone just some kind of light so you can see the design so i have this makeshift lighting here that i made because it's kind of gloomy today oh no you can just hold it in front and then just kind of line it up and if it gets stuck and you don't like it just very gently peel it off Okay, so after a long time of trial and error, I finally got it. And if you can't tell, see, I didn't press down hardly at all. But once you have it in the perfect spot, you're gonna wanna start pressing it down. So we're just gonna flatten it out. <laughs> we're gonna move my makeshift lighting back over here. And now it's stuck like that. See the cardstock there? Okay, so the next step is trimming the excess paper off. Be really careful and really try to match the cardstock and also do not cut off your design by accident. And even as perfect as I tried, you can still kind of see that um, I could have moved over a little bit more. I almost cut off the S in Princess, but there's still a lot of space at the C in Clockwork. No one can really tell unless if you're staring at it for 10 years. I'm just going to quickly do the other one and I'll get back to you when I start laminating the four bookmarks. Okay, so now I finished all four bookmarks and the only thing that we have to do now is to laminate them. So here are the beautiful bookmarks that we just made together. Obviously, laminating is definitely optional, but it'll just make the bookmarks more long-lasting and waterproof and all that sorts of stuff. I mean, I'm definitely a klutz when I'm reading and trying to eat or drink tea or anything, and we don't want to really damage the bookmark or our book, so laminating is something that I highly recommend. So the landing sheets that I get, it only comes with like one laminating thing, which is really annoying, meaning that for one like go at it, I have to use two laminating sheets. Oh yeah, and before laminating, be sure to wipe down your area, get rid of any pet hair, your own hair, the peach fuzz from the paper that we were cutting, anything, because we don't want it sticking forever into our bookmarks. So really clear off the space. Doesn't really help that I have the ceiling fan on right now. But once you have a pretty hair-free, paper, peach fuzz-free table, you're good to go. So what I'm gonna do is undo one whole piece Uh, yikes, I forgot. You probably don't want to put your fingerprints on there either. <laughs> so when you're laminating this, it is best to leave a little space in between and really be cautious if there's any hair or anything like that. So it looks like it can fit four, so I'm gonna go for it. So we got lucky and I was able to fit all four onto the sheet. And I just read the label, but my laminating sheet is basically a 10 by 12 and a regular piece of paper, which is also the same size as the cardstock, is 8.5 by 11. So it was obvious that it would fit. So once you've stuck them down, you wanna take a second laminating sheet and we're gonna put it on top. I find it easier if you lay it down and then you put this one on top of it. It's just more control. And then 
Once you have it done, you just wanna cut them. You might wanna take your nail and squeeze out the air bubbles in between them too. Okay, so we laminated now, and it's so beautiful. I can't even right now. And this is what I mean by you're gonna wanna keep a border when you're laminating. I don't know if you can really see because I made it so small, but there's kind of like a rim of laminate around the bookmark. And that's only because if you cut it like right next to the paper, the paper and the cardstock aren't gonna be like one anymore. They're gonna be two separate pieces. And sometimes I do cut a little too close. You can see like it might like separate a bit. Um, that's an easy fix. You're just gonna want to take your double sided tape again and just tape it so it's right next to the edge. So yeah, that's all I have for this episode of Bookmark. Um, it's actually kind of funny because on this and for devices one, I got a piece of my dog's hair in there and I'm so annoyed, but it's okay because it's really hard to get it back out. Um, so I'm just gonna stick it into one of the book. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day, afternoon, wherever you are. Bye! I know it breaks your heart. I moved to the city and I broke down curtains. Boy, it's no call. Now I'm looking pretty in a hotel bar. And I, I, I can't stop. No, I, I, I can't stop. So, baby, pull me closer. Month. Guess how many books I read? Not one. Not Today I'm gonna rearrange my bookshelf. Okay, so this is the end product.